Hi, welcome back. This is the second tutorial in a series of introductory default game engine tutorials, and we're going to focus today on image processing, really an essential skill. Uh, whether you want to impose a stationary image, such as a background or a stationary gate, or whether you want an animated background, either a cartoon animation or something moving about the screen, you really need to learn how to do this. My name is David Chadwick. I'm from Tactic Studios, and let's dive into how Default Game Engine accommodates this important feature. Before we jump in too deep, let's take a look at what the final example is going to look like at the end of this tutorial. You can see over here, I've uh, kind of taken an image of that and uh, a couple things associated with it. Um, we've sized it so it conforms to the, the ratio of width to height that you'd find in an Apple iPad. For this example, it's uh, 1024 pixels wide and 768 pixels tall. Uh, we've added a title to it. Uh, you'll see that up in the upper bar. Uh, we have three distinct uh, game objects from left to right. We have a stationary game cartoon character, a game object cartoon character. In the middle, we have a bouncing wheel. And on the far right, we have what looks like a cartoon character, like you'd flip through a cartoon series. So I guess the ultimate question is, how do we accommodate that using default? Let's jump in. Let's start with uh, taking a quick whiteboard review of uh, what we're going to learn today. We're going to really uh, focus on five general topics. The first is we're going to review the key default elements, collections, game objects, and components. And we're going to jump into that as soon as I'm done here with the whiteboard. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to learn how to add an image uh, to your project, include it with an atlas, and then add it as a uh, sprite underneath a game object. The third thing we're going to do is we're going to learn how to create and how to position in your game world that game object. Lastly, we're going to do some two, two techniques for animation. The first is the use of a flipbook, which is really a series of images that uh, when you flip through them, makes it appear as animation. And the final one is using an animate function unique to default that allows you to change either the location or the size or the opacity of a sprite. Let's go ahead and start. All right, let's just spend a, a short minute to, to learn a little bit how default structures an individual game project. There's really three elements I'd like to describe. The first is the concept of a collection. A collection is a tree structure, a hierarchy. All the other elements fall within that. Actually, you can have multiple collections. The first is referenced in your game.project file, and that's the, the, um, the collection that starts the game. That's the initial uh, but you can have additional collections, and we'll learn how to do that in one of the follow-on tutorials. I don't really want to complicate things right now. The second element is that of a game object. A game object it can have a position. That's where you locate uh, your character, for example. Uh, it can have a scale, so it's scale one-to-one, -one, or you can expand it, or you can contract it. Or it also has a rotation. Um, the game object has a lifespan. You can have a game object last for the duration of your game, or alternatively, you can spawn a new game object or a series of new game objects using something called a factory during the middle of your game, or you can delete a game object uh, based on the, the, the nature of the game if, if a character gets killed or deleted or whatever. Uh, the third element is something called a component. A component could exist of a sprite, aka an image file, for example, a label, a, a, an audio file, uh, things such as that. I hope this is helpful. I, I thought it might be useful to include a graphic in each of the tutorials that provides you kind of an overview of the design uh, that the project is going to uh, follow. Uh, so for this tutorial, the design really consists of a main collection, a single collection, with four game objects embedded within it. Um, so uh, we have the main collection, and uh, within that, the first game object is the geo.background. That includes a, a sprite as the component within that game object that would contain the image, and in this case, orange.background. Uh, the second game object would be uh, the bounce wheel. And we're going to have two components within that. We're going to have a sprite to contain its image, the actual image of the wheel. And secondly, we're going to have a script file, a Lewis script file called wheel underscore script. Uh, no surprise there. Um, that will contain the logic associated with the animation up and down, as you saw earlier. 
Uh, the third game object is the flipbook character, and that's going to identify within the sprite the animation group that includes that series, uh, a series of images that would uh, equate to the, the actual running simulation, if you will, for that particular character. And the fourth game object is going to be the stationary character, the one on that far left that simply sits there. And again, a single sprite containing the image file. So with that, I'm now going to get off the air here and uh, focus on the screen, and let's actually build this project from front to back. Let's begin this project's build. Go ahead and click the shortcut for default. That'll start the default engine. You'll see the logo pop up on your screen as you see here. We're gonna start this as a new project. As a new project, we want it as an empty project for this particular iteration. We're gonna change the title to Tutorial to Image Processing. Obviously you can place any name you'd like there at all. In terms of the location, I have a, a folder on my desktop. The name of that folder is Default Projects. Once those two things are done, go ahead and click the Create New Project button. Once the project's been initiated, I'd just like to highlight three key files that are important. The first is the game.project file. Those are all the project settings associated with the file. We're going to modify those here in just a minute. I just want to highlight the fact that the title is automatically brought forward. We have a main.collection file. That will be the hierarchy that starts the game. And lastly, we have a game.input bindings file. That's the file that links the, the mouse left button or a touch action on a touch screen to a touch action in your Lewis script. Okay, let's modify the uh, current project to reflect uh, the objectives we have in our design. Let's start with the game.project file. The title is fine, and you'll notice that it starts us at the main.collection, which is consistent. I'd like to change the display resolution uh, so it conforms to a traditional iPad uh, aspect ratio of 1.333. So I'm going to change the uh, width to 1024. I'm going to change the height to 768. That way we're all set. The second thing I want to do is we're going to need to load some images, and I want a folder within our project to accommodate that. So under the Tutorial 2 Master Folder, I'm going to right-click, I'm going to create a new folder, I'm going to name that new folder Images. The second thing I want to do is I want to create a atlas within my main folder. That'll be, once I have the images in, I'm going to consolidate them into that atlas. So under Main, I'm going to right click. I'm going to press New. I'm going to choose Atlas. And I'm going to title this atlas to be Assets. And now I have an assets.atlas as a stub. This is a folder that contains each of the images we'll use in this project. You can download these images from the tacticstudios.com uh, uh, tutorial site. Once I select all the images, I'll simply drag and drop them into the images folder within our project. I'm now ready to add images to my atlas. Within the Atlas, I want to do that in two steps. I want to add all of those images that are not associated with the uh, flipbook initially, and then I'll add the flipbook. In the outline window, I right-click Atlas, I select Add Images, and I select the character PNG file. I go back up, I add images, and I add the orange background as well as the wheel PNG. To add in the flipbook characters requires something that's slightly different. I go back to the atlas in the outline, I right click it, and at that point I want to add an animation group. That'll be where all of the images associated with that animation, associated with that flipbook are located. Down in the properties panel, I can now change the ID or the name associated with that animation group. And I'm going to change that to jump animation. The other thing I want to do is I want to uh, identify how fast how fast we want our project to go through those animations. And I found that uh, a, a frame per second of about 12 uh, works very well. I now want to add images to the jump animation group. I add images, and at this point, 
jump underscore zero 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 all the way through jump underscore zero zero nine are all of the images associated with that flipbook. The last thing I want to do, and this is kind of important, um, in older platforms, platforms you're going to export your game to, if images are side by side uh, it, within the atlas, there's sometimes bleeding where the colors from one image will bleed over into the image, a different image. So the way I can avoid that is I go to my atlas and I click it. And down under properties, there's a feature called extrude borders. That's going to create a gap between each of the images. I'm going to set that to three. And that way I won't have to worry about image, image bleed off between one to the other. So at this point, we have each of the project settings established. Uh, we've loaded images and uh, put them into an atlas. And we're now ready to uh, start building the collection of game objects that will reflect the various characters in the game. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to implement the stationary game objects. That would be the background and the stationary character that you see on the left-hand side. From our asset panel, go ahead and double-click Main Collection. Main Collection now shows into the Project Editor. Over in the Outline, I'm going to right-click Collection, and I'm going to Add a Game Object. It initiates that with an ID of geo, but to keep them all separate, I'm going to name this background. That'll be the name of the game object associated with the background to the game. Once I've changed the ID of the background, I'm going to right click background and I'm going to add a component to it. The component I'm going to add is a sprite. Once I've established the sprite, I need to identify the source of the image and the default animation associated with the image. For the background, the assets.atlas is the source. All the images are located in that atlas. And the default animation is the orange background. One last thing I want to do is I need to identify the position of the background. I want it located so that the lower left corner is at the origin, zero, zero. So I do that, I set the position for the game object at a position of half the width of the screen and half the height of the screen. And as you can see, I'll bring this in. I'm going to open it up a little bit so you can see it better. Here's the origin, 0, 0. And you can see that's the lower left-hand corner of the background image. The second game object is the stationary character. That's that cartoon character that was at the left-hand side of our screen. Again, under our collection, I'm going to left-click collection. I'm going to right-click and add a game object. I'm going to go down to Properties. I'm going to change the ID of this to be Stationary. If I can spell it right, Stationary Character. I'm going to change the position to this. I'll do this before I add the sprite this time, just to show how it works. I'm going to set the position to be a location of 210 from the origin in the X direction, and 328 in the Y direction. Now one of the things that's important is my background has a Z position, in other words, coming from zero on the screen, coming out towards me, of zero. In order to set this above, I'm going to set this at 0 0.5 for the stationary character, and that will put the stationary character on top of the background. The next step would be to add the sprite component. I'm going to right-click stationary character, I'm going to add a component, and I'm going to click sprite. I'm going to identify the image source as Assets Atlas, and I'm going to identify the default animation as Character. Now, within the Scene Editor that you see here in the middle, you can see that it shows me where my stationary character is located. Well, now that we've mastered the uh, addition of uh, stationary game objects to our project, let's see how similar adding a flipbook is. We're going to go to our collection, as we did before, and right-click it. Let's add a game object. The ID of the flipbook game object is going to be flipbook, C-H-A-R. I'm going to locate this at a position of 804 in the X direction and 328 in the Y direction. And as I did before, I want to set the Z parameter, the Z position, to 0 0.5, which will place it on top of the background. Now that I have that in place, 
going to right-click Flipbook character. I want to add a component at this point. The component I add is a sprite, which allows me to now add the animation group. The source of the animation group is the Assets Atlas, and the default animation is the Jump Animation animation group. And now to complete the project, we need to add the animated game object that uses a Lua script to control its animation. So the first step then would be to add the game object. I'm going to left click collection within the outline. As I right click it, I add a game object. The ID for this game object is bounce wheel. I will now add a position for the bounce wheel. I want it located right dead smack in the middle of the screen, so I'm going to set the X to be half the width of the screen. I'll set the Y to be half the height of the screen. And as I did with the other two game objects, I'm going to set the Z, the Z index, to be 0.5, which will place this above or on top of that background. Once that game object's established, I'm going to now add a game component. The game component will be a sprite. The source of the image that I'm going to add to that sprite is our Assets Atlas, and I'll be using the wheel image. I now want to add a new script file to our total project. So under the main folder, I'm going to first left-click it to put it in focus. Then I will right-click main to add a new script. I'm going to title this script Wheel Bounce. When you create a script inside default, it immediately builds out a template associated with each of the potential uh, functions that can be called. For this particular implementation, I'm only going to use the init function. Init is the initialization routine. When you start this app, this will be the function that's called. I'm going to copy in a geo.animate function. I'm going to actually do a deep dive on this in the next segment. So I just want you to show you that this is where it belongs. It belongs in this init function. So the go.animate is a default function that will be called when the game is initialized. At this point now, I need to add this script as a component to my bounce wheel game object. So I'm going to go back to the main collection. I'm going to bring the bounce wheel into focus. I'll right click it to add a component file. The component file is wheel bounce. I select it and I add it. Now you see that the bounce wheel has both a sprite as well as a script component associated with it. Well, we spent quite a bit of time putting all the pieces together. Let's take a quick look and see what this actually looks like. So, under the default editor, I'm going to go up to Project and actually build it. Hopefully what we expected, right? We have the orange background. It's appropriately sized to 1024 by 768. I've got a stationary uh, game object here on the left. I've got a uh, kind of a jumping, bouncing flipbook animation here on the right. And you can see the bounce of the wheel that's using that geo animate function here in the middle. Okay, let's do a deep dive. We never really got into how the Lewis script actually controls this wheel. Let's do that now. All right, final segment. Uh, let's do a deep dive into the geo animate function. That's a function that calls default animation system. It allows you to animate any of the numeric properties of a game object. The position, uh, the rotation, uh, scale, things such as that. It's got several parameters. The first parameter is the URL. That's the actual address of the game object to be animated. In this particular case, the period, under quotes, refers to self. AKA, that's the game object that the script is attached to. So in this case, the bounce wheel. Property. We're going to have the wheel bounce up and down. Therefore, it's the Y position that we're going to be varying using this animation feature. Playback. We want the bounce to be repeated. Therefore, we want it in a loop with essentially a ping pong effect. And so geo.playback underscore loop underscore ping pong reflects that loop 
that that simply goes around and around, ping-ponging the object up and down. The next parameter is the setting, the target property value. How high do we want the wheel to bounce? In this case, 200 pixels. Easing. That controls the nature of the bounce. Is it linear? Is it exponential? In our case, we want it to be what's known as an in-bounce that will yield bounces that increase and decrease in bounce height. And the last parameter is duration. For this example, we're going to set it to two seconds. The entire bounce process, that entire loop, will be a two-second loop. Hopefully that helped a little bit. The GeoAnimate function is a very powerful capability within the fold. We've really only touched the surface in introducing it here. I frequently refer to the default documentation every time I use it. That provides a much more comprehensive explanation for each of the parameters, as well as examples which illustrate the effects of the various possible playback and easing features. Well, congrats. Hey, you've finished tutorial two out of a total of seven in default. You've now got a pretty good solid basis on how the default projects are structured and how to do some basic image processing. So that gives you a good foundation as we move to our next uh, tutorial. Tutorial number three is going to be associated with what I call drag and drop. The ability to use a mouse or your finger on a tablet, for example, a touch, uh, touch uh, command to pick up and select a particular game object, move it across your screen, and drop it at a different location. Uh, the first example we'll have of true uh, user input. A quick, couple quick admin notes. Um, there is a text version of this entire image processing uh, tutorial that you've just watched available on the Tactics Studio website. Please feel free, jump on there. Uh, it gives you a good basis uh, to actually read through it. Um, I find that very helpful in turn to trying to understand. Uh, there are also zip files on that website uh, that allow you to download the full project to include all of uh, the images and the source code and, and all the other uh, project components. Um, please, I really would appreciate any feedback you may have, any questions, any recommendations on how to improve these tutorials. Just provide a comment here below on YouTube. I read those and uh, certainly will take advantage of uh, that feedback that you provide to me. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to subscribe, I would recommend it. That way you'll get a notification as I continue to put out new tutorials going forward. So with that, hey, let's go ahead and uh, close this tutorial and uh, stand by for tutorial number three, drag and drop. Take care now. Really appreciate your time and uh, your enthusiasm as you look at these tutorials. Thanks again.